Good evening and welcome to Topsim. Today we are in the Maserati 250F, the 12-cylinder variety, driven by one Juan Manuel Fangio. One Juan. We'd one Juan. One Juan won one race in one. The previously referred to conversation on Discord took place because I took the defense of Lewis Hamilton as the best Formula One driver of all time. And boy, was there a lot of pushback against it. Freeze frame. I did not properly give the correct backstory here, so I wanted to jump in and give it now. I was having a conversation on Discord about who were the greatest Formula One drivers of all time, and I proposed Lewis Hamilton was because of his wins and championship records. The other side of the argument was that Juan Manuel Fangio was the best driver because of the amount of skill and the low performance and safety that his car had. And a lot of it really just came down to he has the most amount of wins and he's going to have the most amount of championships very soon. It's like that Vince Vaughn quote about Michael Jordan being the best NBA player of all time and referring to his championships. It's the only argument I need, John. And so I think because of that uh, conversation, it's really opened my eyes into uh, the possibility that I could try out Juan Manuel Fangio's car. Now, I wish I had like a Snoopy hat or a scarf. I literally have never owned a scarf, but the one piece of uh, material that I could put together for a cosplay, gloves. So let's try the Maserati 250F with gloves on. I've never driven this car. Let's see how it goes. Okay. I'm expecting that this probably is going to be more crazy than the Ford GT. Oh, it just slides through the corner. This is going to be a wild ride. Let's see what happens when you give it gas. The rear end just starts sliding out, even the smallest amount of gas. This car does just sail around. The back end just sails around behind you. This is terrifying. Racing this would be uh, awful. Let's see. Oh, the rear end. Okay, the rear end does just sail on you. Holy shit, need for speed. Okay, this car wants me dead. Racing this car, I will admit, would be a lot harder than the V6 hybrids we have today. But it really comes down to the difference between maximum precision and death defiance. The difference between Evil Knievel and Jeff Gordon? But nevertheless, this car is just terrifying to be behind the wheel of. I'm afraid to actually go fast in it. Now that we've, you know, completed one out lap, I kind of want to see where exactly and how I can try to push this car in any way. I wonder what the... So this is a 1967 version of Silverstone. However, this car was only used through the 50s, I believe. Uh, Maserati uh, stopped uh, fielding this car in Formula One in 1960. They ran through, I think, 54 to uh, 1960. Uh, it could be even a little bit earlier than 54. But I would be interested to see what uh, time this car had at Silverstone. Ooh. Oh, shit. Okay. So... I have no idea about the safety parameters of this car, but that could very well have just been death right there. I don't understand. I said this about the Ford GT when referring to our uh, Le Mans video. I just don't understand what people have to prove by driving these machines. Like I, un okay, not by driving them, by racing these machines. Then again, I guess it goes back to is Formula One today too easy? Does Lewis Hamilton have it too easy compared to Fangio? This car, we're going over 100 miles an hour right now. And imagine doing that with no kind of safety equipment. 
I'm sure this didn't have seatbelts. I'm sure you're just sitting on a metal seat. Maybe there's some cushion. But there's no helmet. It's just a hat, basically. There's nothing stopping you from death if anything goes wrong. Holy shit, this car handles off-road not that poorly. Pretty much exactly the same as on-road. Alright. Okay, we're gonna... I think this is the start-finish. So we're still gonna try to... Let's see what kind of lap time we can set now. One final sweeping corner to stay on track. And we will have set a hot lap. There we go. We might as well just go until we... <laughs> crash. All right, dreaded fifth gear. How are we gonna come back from this? Hard braking into third. Control the slide, fourth. And this will for sure be our fastest lap as we saw our way through. So we did a 155.851. Let's see what the uh, time was. And let's go with the 1956. Uh, Silverstone race. Let's find out what that was. All right, the British Grand Prix. It looks like the same configuration, of course. Uh, pole was a 141. The fastest lap uh, of the race was 143. So we're a good 10 plus 11 seconds uh, off, you know, 12 seconds off, uh, off the pace of, of what they were doing in this car, which really makes you think about how much more they were pinning it and how much more dangerous it was than even I was experiencing. What do you know, Fangio won that race. All right, here we go, lining up at a 1957 British Grand Prix. Oh, I fucked it up. Here we go, for real in the 1957 British Grand Prix. Oh no, miss shifts. Okay. Oh boy. They really slowed down a lot for that one. Oh, they're locking up in front. Okay. Ooh, okay. Controlling the slide, a little bit of sawing through the corner. All right, we make the, our pass. Oh, we cannot slow down in time. We run into the back of someone. Yes, it's our race over. So we would not have made it alive out of the 1957 British Grand Prix. Here we are at the starting line of the 1958 British Grand Prix. A much better start than the previous year's Grand Prix. Already losing control of the rear end. Oh, having to lock it up as they really lose some speed in front of us but we are sitting in third position in lap one okay second place for us oh my almost making contact with the first place driver going off way off what place will we rejoin in is it too late Can we keep it on track? Half the car, we kept half the car on. Oh, rear end. We gotta cut some wood and go sawing to keep the car on board. Oh, contact. They fly off the track, but all is well that ends well. The same corner we went off in, but this time we make up a couple positions. I think a few rather. I think a few you actually is a better description than a couple. Oh! 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 Alright, so that would have been the exit. 
<laughs> of uh, our life. <laughs> we would have died in the 1958 Grand Prix. I'm starting to see uh, how this is going to go. Our final attempt, the 1959 Grand Prix. And we get off to a similar start as last year's. <laughs> oh, and we suffer the same fate. Okay. The 59 Grand Prix. A little bit of contact there. We go off of course. Off course again for us. Oh, we try to take the inside line and we make a little bit of contact. Ooh, just controlling that rear end. That's what this car is all about. Oh. defended hard against that I guess he saved us from flying over the edge that would have been the end of both of our cars though in a real life situation this is fine this is fine This is fine, this is fine. All right, looks like we're approaching the rear end of the main field already. All right, let's see how much we can make up with our momentum entering that corner. Looks like we lost a lot of it in the mid and exit of it though. However, one position, I won't complain. Big crash in front of me. Big crash in front of me. Lucky not to get involved in that. I think we're up into sixth place. Fifth place. This is not where I want to be. It's so hard. This car requires 100% concentration at all times because at any moment, the rear end of this car could just decide it wants to go around in any directions or maybe even both at the same time. One guy riding into the wall. Did not want to make contact with that guy. He stole all of our momentum with that one piece of contact. Yeah, we make contact. He flies off. We stay on. How unfortunate. How unfortunate. Ooh. Ooh. There's no way. Is that. Are we in, all the way up in the second place already? Oh no, there's a car. I see him way up ahead. Ooh, we just barely don't make contact. Let's see, but we will get the pass on this guy. but we will not hold it. Did not want that to happen. Okay, leaders on final lap. We are in third place. All right, I believe we just moved up into second place. I wonder if there's any possibility of catching the guy all the way out in front. Looks like I see cars approaching me in my rear. 
And I could just barely make out that car. I don't think we're catching him at all. Ooh. Oh, Tokyo Drift around the corner. Sec race play. Okay. Ho oh, ho. Crashing just after crossing the finish line. Still getting our second place. We're going to take it. That car was ridiculous. It just wanted us dead. There's no getting around it. <laughs> I, I, I can't believe people raced these. Um, but that being said, I, I think there are two completely different worlds between Fangio and Hamilton. And I think, uh, as the saying goes, it's apples and oranges. I usually think fruit could be compared, but I think in this situation, they're they're, they're very different animals. Uh, I, the, the, the difference between uh, the, the difference between a penguin and a chicken. Uh, I, I think I think that these these things are just just far too far apart. But I wonder what our lap time was of this race. Let's see as we can go at. Let's uh, check it out and compare it to the 1957 British Grand Prix time. So our best lap was a 156.489, and I think if we remember, uh, it was a, what, 144? 143 uh, was uh, the fastest lap of the race, so incredibly slower than they were, uh, and it was still an incredible, uh, shock, shockingly dangerous level of racing. So uh, it, it, I think it's a it's a level it's a world that'll never be seen again. Uh, not only in motorsports but in 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 life. This is just a an experience that'll never exist uh, in the future. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys uh, are interested in subscribing or leaving a like. We'll see you in the next one.